Hi, welcome to Antique Quest and another episode of Harrison Sons Auctions. Today we're going to show you around and show you some of the things that are in our New Year's special auction. Um, the shop is absolutely jam-packed. We have a lot of auctions coming up at the beginning of this year and they're all fantastic. Um, I don't even have room to sit at my desk, which I normally do at the beginning of these videos. So um, we have this sale that we're going to show you today, which is on now and closes on January 6th. It will start soft closing at 9 o'clock on Thursday, um, on the 6th of January. And um, February is going to have a man cave auction. And in that we have a great military collection. We have a jukebox with all the records in working order. We have a, a beautiful barber chair. Um, we have a whole bunch of advertising items from tins to counter displays to signs to um, all sorts of stuff. And there'll be collectibles in there as well. Um, some sort of, you know, like uh, fishing creels, that sort of thing. So um, lots to look forward to there. And then in March starts our fabulous Maritime's Great Toy Auction. And this is the Lifetime Collection of Bernard Hale. And it's going to be two full auctions. So the first one will be all the pressed steel trucks and pedal cars, things like that. Um, and the second one will be a lot of uh, the tin Japanese and clockwork uh, pieces, wind-ups, that sort of thing. So lots to look forward to. But today we're here to show you what we have in the sale right now so you can have an idea of size and what you're bidding on for January 6th. So let's have a look now. Okay, so over here we'll start. We've got some great Canadian items. We've got this uh, very nice firkin here. And the lid has a beautiful pinwheel carved into it. I don't know if the camera will focus on that for you or not. Um, nice piece there. We've got this great old weather vane, tin weather vane with the horse on this old stand. Great piece. We've got a beautiful little Kentville made canoe and this has a beautiful finish on it as far as surface goes for you guys that like your Canadiana with a really nice surface. This has got a really nice stippled uh, finish on there, all original. And we have this box which I've had a couple people that were in the shop here exclaim they thought this was a lot bigger. So uh, let's see if I can move the weather vane over for a minute. So great dome top, little trunk, really nice cutouts on the skirt on the bottom. I uh, hope you can see that, but it's actually a lift top, so there's no hinges on this one. It just lifts right off and fits, and it's all chisel marked in here. Uh, just a really nice color, too. I, I really like that piece. And we have some great folk art here. And uh, Bill Benner, this one's 2013, I think. 2015, sorry. 2015. I love this one. So this man here is rowing for all he's worth to take this fine bikini clad lady water skiing. Uh, just a great, great comical piece of folk art. And he's done a few in our sale today and they're really, really good. I mean, there's this uh, wonderful canoe with the natives paddling away and this fella even comes out and the canoe lifts off its stand. And one of his trademarks is these polka dots he seems to put on the edges of everything. Um, but really nicely carved canoe, really nice proportions. We've got this great early wooden jointed doll. Quite a large size as you can see. Um, but jointed at her knees and her hips and elbows and shoulders. Nicely painted face on there too. Let's see if we get lucky. Autofocus doesn't always get what I want. And we have this half hull of the Titanic. Another great folk art piece. Lots of really good folk art in this sale today. Um, mostly all from one collection. Now we have a few lots with these early Lunenburg ox teams. 
And these two are fantastic. This is a really early set because Lunenburg made these for quite a while. Uh, very heavy, all cast metal. Um, but we have, I think, three sets in this sale. And pay attention because we're going to have three more in an upcoming sale. Whether it's the next sale or a few back from there, I'm not sure as yet. But um, always good collectibles there. Now we do have this tomahawk axe head here. Um, now this came actually, we figured out later, because it has this strip of Velcro on it, it was actually part of the arrowhead collection that's framed in the sale separately. This was off when we found it and we listed it as a separate piece because we thought this might have some interest in it. But if you are interested in both things, the, the arrowhead collection and this, know that originally that was on that same display with the arrowheads that we had. Great color to it, really nice finish. Uh, I mean, this is more for a museum expert to tell you about, but uh, the actual stone head itself looks quite early. Um, and in keeping with the folk art, we have this wonderful Mod Lewis silk screen. Um, this was the proper silk screens that were made earlier, 1982, I believe, but under license from Mod originally. So. Uh, that's in our sale. And the other things over there I'm going to bring the camera down further for. But here's another Bill Benner uh, weather vane. Uh, is that even in the camera? I can't tell. But it's uh, it's got this guy cranking an old Ford at the uh, gas pump here. Again, notice the polka dot seems to be his, uh, his thing. And while I'm in this section, there's a lot of Micmac, Micmac baskets in the sale today. Uh, we've lotted them together because there were so many in this last estate we did. He collected for years and years and years, and we just couldn't list them separately as we normally would. So a few of these lots are pickup only, but they are great baskets, and there's a lot of them, and I have more that will be coming up in future sales as well. Um, here's a nice little folky painting. This is a good one. For Sean Markey, if he's out there, he likes this sort of thing. But just a nice early farm scene. Uh, A.J. Martin, signed on the back. Great little real honest-to-goodness folk art there. Uh, we've got a nice goose study, flying geese. Oh, here's another one of the Lunenburg Foundry pieces. A little later, this one. Not as early as the other one, but still. This is a really neat key. This is an advertising key. And it says, key to success on that side. And on this side it says, use Eclipse Soap. So it's a good early advertising piece. Neat old uh, find there. And we have this, oh, this old pond yacht, which I do believe is marked pickup only. And that's usually because of these masks that are a real pain in the butt to try and get into a box. So, and this one's quite heavy. But a nice, if you like the worn look, this is the one for you. Okay, you're gonna move us down a little bit. All right, let me just move a couple of things out of my way here. Okay, we have a piece here by Fenton Dukeshire, a Nova Scotia folk artist, and this is a fantastic one. I hope we can see this all, just so you can get an idea of the size of this. There's the whole church choir singing. There's the pastor sitting down and with his hands folded together behind the podium and there's a fantastic uh, I don't know if it's gonna see organ player there a little little older lady with her hat on playing the organ just a fabulous piece by uh, Fenton Dukeshire we've had a few by him over the years and they've really been well accepted uh, beautiful little Dykeman candlestick holder just a, a great color I love the color of these they're fantastic a very early Nova Scotia seal, um, double-sided, but it has a schooner on the one side and men on the dock trading with the native. Uh, really, really great seal. You'd find these on land deeds and that sort of thing way back in the day. Uh, we have a wonderful early Asian painting um, on rice paper. Now this one has, the provenance is written on the back in very old writing and is rewritten on this white card that somebody put on here 
and even that's got some age to it, but it's, it's exactly writing what it says above here. And basically it says it was received in 1886 and it was believed at that time to be a hundred years old. So neat little piece, some wear pieces missing off the edges, but the birds are fantastic. Um, nice gentleman's travel case with um, complete with its pocket knives, all its containers, bottom section as well. Beautiful, nice woodwork, nice little mother of pearl. A sketch in there to be engraved. Um, this is a really interesting game board. And this is really thick plate glass. But these are all beautifully painted and it's not going to show up on here. Now there is some chips that have come off because I imagine it's fairly thick paint and they're floating in there. Now you could take it apart and try and fix those up but it's just such a neat game board and the backing and the sides is beautiful quarter sawn oak and it's all screwed in. I've never had one like this before. I think it's fabulous and the coloring and the paint on these is just great. Uh, we have some Parian and Bisque figures. We have Mackenzie. We have Sir John A. Macdonald. And we got a small Jim Howe. Now we have some other interesting boxes here as well. This is a nice little writing desk, traveling writing desk. It does have some compartment issues. Hard to hold here, but it has little slots for your letters and whatnot. And the whole slope folds out like so. There we have it. Oh, that's heavy. Keep that in mind if you want it shipped. But uh, it's a reproduction diving helmet, all copper and brass. Great for display, um, not an original one. Never seen one, actually. Really nice spongeware jug there and pinks and purple, well, purples and reds and blues. Uh, let's see what else we can show you. Now I have this listed as a foot warmer, which I believe it is. It's two-sided and there's a, a pierced grill in between there. And I imagine here to fill that with coals and set it down and just put your feet up on it. Uh, let's see some of this from the back here. St. John's Pottery, and this is the beaver spittoon. So it's got the beaver running around the sides. Uh, it's in great shape. I think there's a couple little nicks underneath. You have to sort of search for them, one right there. But all in all, a rare piece, hard to find. With the beaver pattern. Nice little Tinker's Tinsmith candelabra there. Nice little size. Um, some tramp art. Really neat box with a sliding lid. Um, great jelly mold, which I'm going to show you a couple of these paintings by H.C. Bryant. He's a very well listed British artist. And this one is fantastic. It's almost like a prize bull painting. Very early canvas. They're done in the 1860s. One of them is actually dated, and I, I can't forget what it is off the top of my head. It's 1861, 63, something like that. But a very well listed. Look them up. Uh, well worth investing into these paintings. Even the other one that has just a small little tear in it. Um, get it out here safely. The match to the other one really because it's the same exact same size but you can see there's just a little a little tear there um, but that can easily be restored it can almost be pushed back in um, and complete it so well worth getting a couple of nice match frames for those and we've got some fun folk arty pieces like that i hope you can see that i don't know if the windows kind of affecting the view. And this is our early one. I think this is the, oh, I can't remember the date off the top of my head, 1779. 
beautiful sampler, Nova Scotia sampler. So I have to be careful. I even have toys down at my feet here. I'm trying to get around. There's a lot of toys in these next couple sales, but a really nice early sampler. And these are believed to be the works of two sisters that came from the Windsor area in Nova Scotia. So again, uh, there's too much glare on these. I don't know if you'll see them, but okay. Just for an idea of size. Nice pair of early samplers there. And the Fractor, which is the poem of the Sabbath bell. This is a very important piece. So historically now we're, now we're getting a little more serious. This is by Joseph Williams and it's fully signed here. Now he is not known to fully sign most of his works, just have the little initials that you see in the bottom down here. Now the Nova Scotia Museum had put out a paper with some of the works of his and they didn't have it as JPW, which it actually is because when he does just the initials, it looks like JPN or JPM. And another place in the States had a work by him and again, called it the wrong thing. They said initialed by JPM. But this is actually a good proof piece to verify all the others because it has both the initials down in the bottom and his full signature up here and his real name is actually Joseph Williams. So that is absolutely a fantastic fractor. For those of you that are interested in a very historical piece, um, very good Nova Scotia piece. Um, I would suggest investing into that. Okay. Two fabulous uh, PEI birds from David Broderick. But these are large, these mergansers. Look at the size of these. And their eyes are, wow, they're captivating. They, they're almost spooky as you look at these birds. But the carving, the detail and the feathers and the sides and the paint, uh, absolutely gorgeous pair of mergansers there. And that's why we sold them as a pair. For those of you that are interested in uh, textiles, fabulous old black satin pillow, Victorian I would think, but the, the decoration is all raised. I don't know the proper name for that. Forgive me for that, I'm not a textile person but I can appreciate a good piece when I see it, and this is a good piece, and the colors are fantastic. This has not been left in the sun at all. Great piece there. And there's lots of other things hiding in amongst here, but I'm gonna take you down a little further. Okay, I'm basically throwing myself into the picture here so you can see the artwork and get an idea of its size. Um, of course, I can't get real close to the wall, which would give you a more accurate size. But we have a fantastic Harold Cromwell here, and that's the second biggest one I have seen of his works, and I own the biggest one I've ever seen of his works. Um, very hard to come by in that size. It's usually on a paper plate or something small. And this is the old mill, 1933, and all done with a black pen. Uh, fantastic, a good investment piece again. He's a folk artist that needs to rise quite a bit from where he stands now. He's appreciated, but He's right up there with Maude Lewis and Joe Norris. As far as I'm concerned, it's a fantastic story um, and they're not nearly as prolific. So although he did a lot of works, they're very hard to come by. Um, nice little John Harvey painting there. I love that scene myself. This one is signed Smith, although we can't uh, make out that first name. It's not Edith. Um, I really can't tell what it is. I, I want to guess, but I can't get close enough. Uh, I don't know if these are still on the screen. These are a couple original pencil drawings by Graham Noble Norwell, well-listed, well-known Canadian artist, and very, very much exactly the kind of thing he paints in the larger paintings. This piece is wonderful. The, the faces, this is called the Jockeys, and this was by Whitting. Um, Frederick Whitting, well-known artist again, and this is an etching, and it is spectacular. I love it. Um, we have another Paul Signac piece there, another etching. I can't even see myself in there, so I don't know if you can see these. Um, but do some research on this. This is a six, seven hundred dollar piece, and it's sitting there right now with no bids, and I think the starting bid's a hundred dollars. Uh, super well-known French artist. 
Um, we have a nice John Cook pencil drawing. We have another Ayer Simmons, a uh, very well-known artist again, well-listed artist. Um, I don't know, I might bring you over there. We have this wonderful large Dennis Teekel. Just needs to be have a frame made for it. I would suggest like a barn board frame would look great on this because it's three uh, characters hiding behind the fish shack. I don't know what they're if they're up to no good or if they're just having a break or what, but great colors and a nice big dynamic piece. Some more baskets around my feet here. This rocking horse, let's hope you can see that. Um, this is just a beautiful piece of woodwork with real horse hair on it. Uh, this was, we have the full story comes with it. The fellow that carved this actually carved two of these that are in the Royal Family's collection right now. So he sent them over to the Prince. Um, one was purchased, I forget off the top of my head, it's on the website though, it's on the link, um, by a government agency in Canada to send as a gift to the Prince. So. And then they liked it, and there was another one sent to the next prince. So, two of those in the royal family, and one of them right here in Granville Center. So, then we have, uh, let's see. Oh, I want to show you these oxen head, because I think you'd probably have the image that these are smaller when you look at them online. But these are quite a large set. That's right against my chest, to give you an idea. Beautifully folk curved oxen head. It even has the... Uh, the little whip up here stuck in the side. Uh, just really nice old paint. Bells are carved on there and everything. A fantastic Nova Scotia piece there. Okay. And I don't want to miss too much. Nice little painting hiding back here. I don't know if you can see that. I hope it's not glaring. Hard for me to see from here. Again, unframed, but that's okay. This little wall box needs a little more consideration as well. It took me a bit of looking at first, but under close inspection, you can see where this had a, an old blue paint. You can find traces of it on the back, gray, blue. Um, but it's you can see it has new screws put in it, so somebody's redone this, probably back in the 70s when it was common to strip everything. It's because it does have some age to the refinish, definitely. But look at the cutouts. It's really nice. It's just a classic good wall box, probably Quebec, I would say, um, that had been redone in the old days when they did that sort of thing. But uh, traces of blue in the end grains where it's almost impossible to get it out. Well, that's a nice piece. And I think I'm going to bring in closer for this stuff over here. Okay, beautiful chip carved clock case or for a large pocket watch. Uh, it was common back then and the lid does lift off and there is a small spot where it would have had a hook, I believe, and you would come home and you would hang your large, you know, the 1880, 85 big silver pocket watches. You would put it in there on the side of the dresser at night and it would hang in there and look like a grandfather clock. But the case is the art here, a uh, fabulous chip carved case. I have a beautiful original paint. Let's hope this does a little focus for you. Early, early Japan uh, toll painted box here. The end the decorations on the ends are all original, all right as rain. Um, Again, a Tinker's Tinsmith piece, but beautifully folk decorated. Inside, nice early handle on there. It is separating slightly at the bottom, but that's, uh, that's fairly common on these early tin pieces. But uh, for you collectors that still collect that sort of thing, I love it myself. Beautiful painted document box here again, folk decorated. Nice uh, color to the inside, nice finish, nice surface, and we're decorated all the way around on this one, which is nice. Nice floral decoration, early paint colors too. Uh, again, you know, it's probably not going to show too well 
and we're using some yellow lights because the shop's so full I can't get my good studio light over here so um, but to give you an idea of size anyway and probably my favorite little box in the sale is this fantastic folk painted little bird box uh, to give you an idea the hinges are gone so I'm trying to be careful here but it would open this way and it's a little writing box where you have your uh, inkwell or what have you in there little slots for your pens seems like there's been a little bit of an ink spill up here at one time but that's okay that's what we want to see anyway um, but it's just a, a perfect gorgeous folk painted bird sides are very nice there's a little details here on the side and again right around the escutcheon but to give you an idea of size again that's right up against me and wonderful colors with the yellow uh, just a great piece now this guy I'm gonna try and lift him off the stand because he's big oh, this is a great looking weather vane nice rooster weather vane one side looks more blue and one side looks more ready just the way it's faded over the years but look at the tail these are all all metal of course and this is metal clad over plywood uh, and he has a big holder he was definitely a weather vane this isn't just a mock-up or anything so he's a classical old weather vane he's all full of little bb shots where somebody's been pegging him off with a pellet gun probably or a bb gun rather lots of little dings in them and it comes with a stand just for display purposes get it back on there okay and I'm not gonna take it down but as a, a morning type wreath goes this is fantastic it's not done out of hair which you usually see this is all wool and the colors are spectacular and the detail is fantastic um, in its original frame uh, just a great great piece a beautiful little Grenfeld rug here that's been framed under glass and it's a polar bear on an ice floe, and the polar bear is made out of seal fur. Um, there's another Bill Benner piece, the Cigar Store Indian. And uh, it says cigars, five cents on the bottom. Uh, really neat, great piece. And this sailor's work, if I can get it off the nail, I got it on. There we go. This old paddle here, and I mean, it's not a real old paddle, but it's basically a sailor showing all the different types of work you can do with the rope work especially here in the handle where you get all these different kinds of work and binding all the way along so it's just a really neat example of uh, sailors handiwork uh, in the folk art so great display piece for your wall uh, but really interesting to see how fantastic the weave is on these i mean this is this is some really nice work midship And we'll move you over to the other part. Okay, I've had to move it this way because the window over there is going to throw off the exposure. Uh, we've got a nice Chippendale mirror back here, which you might have seen from the other way. Uh, the copper samovar that was at the end is quite a, quite a sizable piece. Great display piece. And this is the Arrowhead collection, and there's some down in a bag as well. So the feather work around the frame here is really interesting. The arrowheads themselves are very interesting, uh, but it is actually an old, one of those old plastic frames. So I don't know whether that was put together by possibly, uh, you know, natives as a, as a souvenir piece, that sort of thing, um, but really neat comes. And this is the one that would have had the tomahawk and you could see it would have went right there. Cause you can see this fuzz has been lifted up where that uh, Velcro was on the shaft of the uh, tomahawk there that we showed you earlier. Okay. Some horse decorations, nice stencils, some really nice folky paintings. Um, the lady in the canoe here. Those are early too. Um, this one, it's, you know, it's in the 1800s um, as, as is this one. If this one wasn't dated, I'm not sure if we didn't get a date on that. The souvenir paddle from the Mohawk Trail. Uh, really nice one. It has a, has a split running from about there to there. Um, right through the little image it has on there, but all in all, nice early form. Um, 
This is the Boy Scout piece, which I think is really neat because it's it's sort of carved in and then painted. Um, I don't know. Can you see him? This girl, nice little scout piece. Some more folk art, Akiti Axeman and this little uh, hungry squirrel are a lot together. Some signs. Uh, let's see. I'll show you this. Nice early cradle board with beaded work. And the beading is perfect. It's beautiful all the way along there. Nice carved backboard. Newer rope on there, but um, got some fishing creels, some more canoes. Uh, the biggest of the canoes with the quill work on it is that one. So it's a really good size. Uh, the end is just starting to come apart, and the same thing at this end, but the quill work is absolutely perfect. It's got the little end boards in here. The inside is very nice, the bottom's very good. It's just those two ends, but all the colored porcupine quill work for the decoration is in excellent condition. We have some fabulous seal skin gloves for you guys that want to be super warm because these are super warm. That's the big size one. And let's see what else can we show you. We got some more folk art. We got a banjo. We've got uh, Turger separator sign. Board off of one of those. Oh, I know what I can show you here in a second. There's another sign over here. And there's various baskets and whatnot, but this is a, uh, it will wear the shoes for boys. So um, originally wouldn't have had a wooden shoe here, would have had the real shoe that they were advertising, but um, that's there for now. And it looks pretty good that way, I think. And where was it? Ah, yes, Japanese sword. Now this is a very early wooden and lacquered uh, scabbard. And this part has come away. But it's an interesting feeling blade because I've handled a lot of fake ones. Uh, this one has quite a, quite a weight to it considering how thin it is this way. Narrow, I should say. Uh, it's quite sharp, but um, this is all carved wood, but underneath there is a signature. It is just kind of corroded on the steel. Very hard, we can't really make it out or even take a good picture of it for you, but it is there. So it is a signed blade. So in my opinion, which I am no Japanese sword expert, but in my opinion, that is a, an actual Japanese sword. Very neat piece. The most legitimate looking one I've ever had in here, that's for sure. Uh, Beautiful curve. This is actually signed, this bust. It's actually signed back here, but I couldn't make it out 100%. So hopefully somebody there knows who that is. And this document box, or lap desk rather, from Kingston, Ontario. The consigner who lives here now, who is a professor, or was a professor at one point, um, was given this when he was a young man and he was doing his schooling in Kingston at one point. And one of his older landladies gave him this as a gift because he was studying this sort of thing, history and whatnot. And it was absolutely full of all these early documents and papers pertaining to Kingston, as well as the one seal that you'll see in the, uh, I don't want to pull it out now, but uh, online, that is apparently a land transfer deed for where part of the penitentiary now stands. I can't confirm that, that's what I was told. So. Um, but I mean the box is in absolutely beautiful condition, but I think it's historical Contents are what make it more interesting and they all came with the box. It's been left exactly as it was gifted to them um, I can show you maybe a few of the jewelry pieces and then I'll just give you a little teaser with some of the toys that I have laying around here Very very hard to move around here. It's never been this hard to move around here before this is a beautiful Art Nouveau jug, uh, Metlock. So successionist really, uh, if we want to be correct, but beautiful design, beautiful color. Um, give you an idea of size again. But we have a lot of uh, Navajo native jewelry. We have these wonderful silver belt buckles. 
Again, give you an idea of size. And these are earlier pieces as well. Uh, there's even a great little money clip with the bear claw design on it. Um, this jade bear is getting quite a bit of attention so far. And it's an absolute gorgeous color little stone. Um, I hope it focuses, I don't know if it will. But it's a beautiful color. Getting lots of interest right now. And what else can I show you? This one I think people will think it's smaller than it actually is. It's quite a sizable silver bracelet there. And I did have a one of my customers tell me what type of stone that was. And I can't remember it. I'm sorry. It's one I hadn't heard of before. So uh, We do have a Cartier watch, a ladies Cartier watch. And we do have a Rolex, which is a Solar Aqua Rolex. Again, size. I uh, don't know if you can see them through the bags, but this is just a quick little extra part we'll do here. Give you an idea of some of this stuff. Uh, this is the gold and silver bracelet, or necklace rather, some of the brutalist design work. But give you an idea, that's a fair, fair size piece there. And it's all silver except for these pieces flanking the main one are 14 karat gold. No signature, unfortunately, and a lot of this brutalist design stuff, which a lot of it was from Germany, uh, you know, uh, they did, didn't seem to get much in the way of signatures. This is the Sherman brooch while it's in my hand. Again, fairly sizable piece. Um, another brutalist design bracelet. Uh, what else can I show you in here? I mean, a lot of that stuff's better to see online. Um, Okay, so I think I'll just uh, show you a few teasers. What do you think of that? Okay, to give you an idea what I'm up against, there's just some of the uh, advertising stuff that's coming in the sale that I've already got listed. That's why it's out here. The trailer's still full. Um, look at this great old Indian motorcycle. Now that's off an old merry-go-round. You can see boxes of toys everywhere in the background. And another showcase we had to bring in. Lots of really neat toys in here. This is just to give you an idea, but don't look below because everything's full. More toys. And more toys and more toys and more toys and more toys. And a lot more toys. 